This is a steel MS200T chainsaw. These are highly sought after saws. They're not making them anymore. I think the reason is because they made them too well and they want a product that is engineered to fail, so to speak. But I, I'm still a steel guy nonetheless. But if you happen to come across one of these saws in your travels, definitely try and pick it up if you can get it for a reasonable price. Anyway, this is a friend's saw and he's having an issue with this saw and he's asked me to repair it. The issue is the saw will start, but once you pull the throttle, it'll bog down and stall out. Now, I have determined this to be a faulty carburetor, and the main purpose of this video is to teach you how to replace the carburetor on an MS200T. However, I'd like to show you how I got to the point of determining that we do, in fact, have a faulty carburetor, and then I also purchased this uh, aftermarket tune-up kit, so we're also gonna replace the air filter, maybe the spark plug, and maybe the fuel lines, and fuel filter, so let's get started. Now the reason your saw is bogging down and possibly stalling out is most likely due to one of the following six issues. Possibility number one would be bad fuel. I replaced the fuel in this saw, so I've ruled out that bad fuel is our issue. Uh, possibility number two is a bad or fouled spark plug. I did remove the spark plug out of the saw. It looked fairly clean. It, I mean, the saw was still starting, so it's possible, but I don't think that that's our issue. Possibility number three would be a clogged fuel filter. Here is what a new fuel filter looks like. Now this fuel filter sits right inside the tank. And if you remove this cap shine down in here with the flashlight, you can get a visual inspection on that fuel filter. I've determined this fuel filter to be free from obstruction, so I don't think that's our issue. Possibility number four would be a clogged air filter. Now the air filter on the saw is definitely a bit clogged up. You can rule this out as being the main issue. This is definitely isn't helping, but you can rule this out as being the main issue by removing the air filter and starting the saw with the air filter off for a short period of time. Uh, I have started the saw without the air filter on and we're still getting the same issue. So not helping, but that's not our main issue. Possibility number five would be a clogged spark arrestor. And the spark arrestor is right here. And I'd like to show you how to access that and check if that is dirty and tell you about how to clean that. Uh, but then, if your saw is still having all the issues after we've covered the previous five items, then possibility number six is just an old, bad carburetor, and you need to replace it. That's what we're going to do after I show you how to take out the spark arrestor here. So this is where the spark arrestor is located on the saw. In order to remove the spark arrestor, you're going to need a T27 bit and perhaps a right-hand pick or some small pliers. After you remove that T27, and you're gonna come in here with a pick or a flathead screwdriver or something and just kinda lift this up out of the exhaust here. Kinda comes out of the saw at like a 30 degree angle. Let's flip this over and inspect the screen. So that screen is very clean. I see no obstructions on that screen whatsoever. Now, if this was covered in carbon, all you would do is take a butane torch hold it with a pair of pliers and just burn off any carbon and then simply reinstall it. Or you could replace this as well, but that is not our issue. So let's reinstall that T27. Now let's move on to how to actually replace the carburetor. So we're gonna start in the back of the saw at the air filter housing. You're gonna take a uh, flathead screwdriver, give this black knob a quarter turn, pop this orange cover off, the air filter may stay attached to the saw. Simply lift that up, and this one we're just going to throw out. Uh, definitely need to clean this up a little bit later. Then we're going to need an 8 millimeter socket, and we're going to remove these two 8 millimeter nuts. After we remove those two 8 millimeter nuts, we're simply going to slide this plastic housing piece off. Put that off to the side. We will need to clean that. Next, we're gonna turn the saw slightly, and you're gonna be looking for this flathead screw. These are the carburetor adjustment screw ports. It's kinda of like a rubber piece right there. So once we remove this little flathead screw, we should be able to remove this little, I'm not sure if it's steel or aluminum. It's like a little retention clip for this piece of rubber right here, so. Pop this retention piece out. Now we should be able to pop this rubber piece out of here, like so, and now we have much better access to the carb. Now as you can imagine, after years of running this saw, this cavity is filled up with a little bit of schmutz. 
You can use compressed air. I think a better alternative would be to use a brake parts cleaner, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try and clear some of this stuff out of here. Uh, being careful not to uh, get any of this schmutz deeper into the engine or into the cylinder. So let's just try and clean this up the best that we can. Maybe tilt the saw down a little bit. And that's a little bit better. Next, we need to disconnect this linkage. Uh, this is the choke linkage. So you can take your fingers or take a pick, but just pop this right out of here, like so. Now I'm gonna tell you everything's gonna be a little tight in here, so have a little bit of patience. So I'm gonna remove what I believe to be the fuel return line. That just kind of pops out of here, so we'll move that off to the side. And I also see the main fuel supply line to the carburetor. I think I might pop this off now. Pops off easy. That'll make it a little bit easier to slide this out of here. So now let's try and slide this right out of here. I know there's still a throttle linkage. See that copper coated linkage? That's our throttle line. Uh, also in order to pull this out of here, you may have some resistance between uh, whatever this knob is right here and the plastic case. So you may have to push the case. And then it should slide out like so. And looks like our throttle linkage came right off. So the old carburetor is out. Now is the time to compare the old carburetor to the new carburetor. New carburetor is on the right and uh, OEM carburetor is on the left. So I like to just make sure that the butterflies are identical, which they just about are on either side. Now we do need to transfer this component onto the new carburetor. So it looks like this will just kind of slide right off. Slide it onto the new carburetor, like so. And we should be ready to install the new carburetor on the saw. All right, at this point, you can replace your fuel lines if you would like. I'm not going to because I see no need to. Also, looking at this engine, the gasket, the OEM original gasket in the saw in between the carburetor and the engine is in good condition and it appears far superior to this Chinesium gasket that came included in this aftermarket kit. So I'm not going to utilize this gasket. I'm just going to reuse what came on this saw from the factory. And without further ado, we should be good to install this carburetor. So first thing I'm going to do is start to slide it down these two studs. And I want to give you a side view here. Make sure the camera's in focus. All right, folks, trying to give you the best cinematography uh, shot I can give you here. But here's the trick to this. As you slide this carburetor down, these studs, reach in this side port, grab the throttle control rod, which again is that copper coated rod. What you're gonna wanna do is guide this into the throttle lever on the carburetor. See there's that little slot right there. So once you get that positioned in that little slot, then you can go ahead and slide this carburetor down and in the rest of the way, like so. Now another critical line that we need to reinstall is the fuel supply line. I don't think that you can attach this with a carburetor outside of where it sits right now, so I'm just going to try and use my fingers and even those pliers and slide it up this barb on the carburetor. And it's really not bad to do so. Skinny needle nose pliers are going to be really handy for a job like this, but that fuel line is now positioned properly on the carburetor. We can go ahead and reinstall this. Next thing I'm going to do is clean this plastic plate, brake parts cleaner, paper towel, compressed air, whatever you want to do. Just get it clean. Now when I took this plastic plate off, there was no gasket behind it. This kit did include a gasket for this purpose. I'm going to go ahead and utilize it because I feel like it's better to have it than not have it. So now I'm going to reinstall this plastic plate. We'll go on right like so, and then we're going to reinstall our 8 millimeter nuts. I'm going to install the new air filter now. And the cover needs a good cleaning. Alright, I have the cover cleaned up. Not perfect, a lot better. We'll go ahead and reinstall this cover now. Quarter turn to the right, locked in. 
Almost forgot we need to reinstall this rubber cap, seal, dust cover, whatever you want to call it. Just kind of pop it back into place. No big deal. Take our retention bracket. That's what I'm calling it anyway. Slides right into that little slot there. And reinstall that flathead screw. After a little bit of fishing, I was able to pull the fuel filter out of the fuel tank. And I don't think there's any reason to replace this. You could pop this off and put the new fuel filter on if you want. But I'm just going to keep this one on the shelf. There's actually less filter material on the aftermarket one compared to the original. So I'm just going to shove that back down in there and move on. Now let's go outside, try and sort it, see if we need to adjust any of our carburetor adjustments. I also adjusted the chain, it was a little bit loose. Chain brake is on, let's see what we get. First fire, I'm going to throw it into half choke, it was on full choke, now it's on half choke, should fire up. Definitely seems like it's running too rich. I think we're gonna have to adjust it a little bit. So you may wanna watch another video if you wanna learn how to properly adjust the carburetor, but I kinda know enough to get by. So you have three adjustment screws. You have the LA port, which is, I believe, the idle adjustment, so that controls how high or low the engine idles at. Pretty self-explanatory. And then you have an L port, and then you have an H port, so L uh, controls how much fuel the carburetor sends to the engine at low idle. And then the high adjustment screw uh, controls how much fuel goes through the carburetor when the engine's revved up. So when I was pulling the throttle, it seemed like at the higher end, we were getting too much fuel. I think it's a little bit rich because we were getting a lot of uh, exhaust smoke. So I'm going to try turning the H adjustment knob clockwise, maybe a half turn. to reduce some of the fuel going into the engine at the high adjustment, so let's give this a go. So it seems like it's burning a little bit rich on the low end too, and even on the high end right now it seems like it's still getting a little bit much, so Let's try turning the low clockwise a half turn. We're gonna turn the high idle down a little bit more, or will the high adjustment knob down? Maybe another quarter turn. Let's try that. Uh, I'm not gonna shut this off from now on. I just kinda wanted to give you the basics of what I know. So I'll adjust it as needed moving forward. Now again, I'm not the best at tuning these engines, but that's a lot better than what it was, and I'm going to call that good. That'll conclude this video. Thanks for watching. As always, I will catch you on the next one.